The Exploitation of Virtual Labor. Lister Wood. What happens when a virtual currency's worth surpasses the price of labor in your country? During this next section of the writing I will be using this video as reference to get a general idea of the amounts of money and profit being created during this process of botting and selling. Accounts made through OSRS, while using the labor of Venezuelans. This is the time stamp you can use as the reference point of referred amounts. 638808 the validity of this video is in question as there is no real way in which to prove what this video is stating is fact other than a few screenshots. But Sir Plugger, the creator of this series of videos, has been known to try and make sure his videos are factual and does work alongside the creators of OSRS when making videos. I would suggest to take these numbers with somewhat of a grain of salt as there may be some inaccuracies and false bragging. Evidence of these bots can be found in game however, it's the issue of the amount of profit made using them that I suggest not fixating on. The person behind this bot farm stated that he's working on 29 accounts characters at once, but then went on to say that they were not working on the characters by themselves. And that they have been making accounts through their workers. So to briefly summarize what this bot farmer is doing is setting up a collection of bots that will play 8 characters all at the same time on one computer. The bots have been told to train their combat skills which would normally take around a month of 12 plus hours a day to achieve. These accounts that have been bottled are then sold to western audiences as a time saver for them so that they can experience an extremely powerful character without putting in the time. The owner of the bot farm then pays their workers, to watch these computers play OSRS and to make sure they are not banned, and paying them an hourly wage for this. They go on to say that they hire Venezuelans, who don't even know how to play OSRS, to train on eight of these accounts at once in which he pays them $25 to $35 per account. These accounts however take about a month to make so the Venezuelans workers are each generating about $240 a month. Around $1 to $2 per hour, these sums may not seem like a lot to a western audience. But sadly this is actually a wage in Venezuela right now where it's been cited that more than 25% of the population earn around $6,000 a year equaling to around $3 per hour. But as with the Chinese bot farm workers this is a much safer and less labor intensive environment to work in compared to other lines of work for this forgotten working class. The owner of the bot farm referenced in the video then explains that they have joined random Facebook groups of Venezuelans, allowing them to scout people who have little to no income. But an internet connection, they would then use Google Translate to communicate with them on how much they would make by working for them in these chat rooms. They however don't mention why they want all of these accounts watched by just keeping it vague. And of course don't mention that they actually sell the accounts for $80 to $160. This means however that the workers are making around $240 a month from the accounts they are looking after. But then the bot farm owner then profits $560 from each worker. Translating to around $3.000 a month with the 8 workers. This bot owner is saying they have working for them. The video then goes on to state that this bot farm owner has over $40,000 in sales vouched for them. Meaning that they have been running this for well over a year and states that they're planning on hiring more people to expand their bot farming empire of digital corruption. The video goes on to mention about another person who sends no information other than that they are also selling accounts in the same fashion as the previous botter. Adding the fact that they have bots working on 15 plus accounts all on the same PC. These bots in the video are performing the same actions that the previous bot farmer had shown off in their video. This would suggest that there are multiple people using these bots to create bot farms for profit.
and competing at how to effectively exploit the game and the people playing it for them. As having 15 accounts played all at the same time is almost double the original bot farmer's 8 accounts, translating to double the discussed profits and stealing of capital. This person however doesn't mention how much money they are making or how many workers they own. But it isn't too hard to imagine that this form of exploitation will go on further than this one bot farmer and will probably be going unknown across many different avenues through OSRS. Solutions. This is the area of text I thought I would include to add ideas for solutions to this issue of exploitation of labor online. I've gone back and forth with different ideas or different paths that could be taken to stop such exploitation, some of these ranging from removing the idea of wealth from the game, making it so that the wealth would be mandated by the game owners, as to keep the world equal, making the game then about skill and experience rather than wealth. I thought this might prove unaffected as it might make people seek other online games as the issue of neoliberalism ingrained into the Western world always has people striving for wealth over experience and skill. I also thought maybe a different approach of taking action offline. Leading the creators of the game to seek legal action to these bot farmers removing them from society for forcing almost slave labor in the digital age to these poor workers in impoverished countries. I went back over and thought that maybe if these bot farmer owners were to disappear due to fear of incarceration, what would happen to these workers? Of which are already in poverty and trying to find less skilled work. Would this result in more poverty and more unrest for these workers? While researching this niche market it brought me with deep sadness to know people go to the lengths of doing this type of digital labor just to be able to afford food or warmth. It made me appreciate the smaller things and luxuries of living in a western power such as the UK and hope that these works can translate these thoughts and feelings I've had while researching this. Topic.